At 3 at 12 a.m. local time, a U.S. drone changed the rules of nuclear war forever. MQ-9B Sky Guardian silently breached Russian defenses and vanished into a city that officially doesn't exist. One question. Why would America risk a drone strike on Sarov, Russia's most secret nuclear weapons site? Spoiler. Because sometimes destroying a warhead factory isn't just strategy, it's survival. In just eight minutes, you'll discover how the Sky Guardian bypassed Russia's most secure airspace, the physics behind its precision strike, and what was actually destroyed, and why it matters. This is not fiction. It's real-world AI warfare deep inside a Russian Zato. Did you know Sarov is the birthplace of the Tsar Bomba and still houses over 4,000 nuclear warheads? Yet one drone just touched it. Here's what happened when America's most advanced UAV struck the heart of Russia's nuclear empire. This is why you should worry. Like and share before it's taken down. The skies above Nizhny Novgorod crackled with static. A ghost moved at 42,000 feet. Silent, invisible, and American. Beneath it, cloaked behind concentric rings of radar, SAM batteries, and psychological denial, lay a city that technically doesn't exist. Sarov, Russia's forbidden brainstem of nuclear ambition. The birthplace of Tsar Bomba. The vault of warheads too terrifying to test. Then, a synthetic aperture radar blinked. A thermal signature confirmed. One Reaper, upgraded and autonomous, locked in. And just like that, the drone fired. Not at a base, but at the Russian equivalent of Los Alamos. The world didn't hear the strike, but the world just changed. And now we unpack how a drone found the nerve center of Russia's nuclear empire and dared to touch it. Sarov is not a city, not officially. It doesn't appear on road signs, civilian maps, or tourism apps. Even Russians need a federal pass to get within 50 kilometers. But deep inside its blast-proof laboratories lies Ven IF, Russia's premier nuclear design bureau. This is where the Tsar Bomba was built, where modern Mervies and hypersonic warheads like Avangard are shaped, and where over 4,000 nuclear warheads, strategic and tactical, are maintained, modified, and mathematically simulated. Why target Sarov now? Because US satellites detected a rapid buildup of mobile warhead transfers, short-range tactical nukes suspected to be preloaded onto Iskander launchers near Belarus. Some were traced back to Sarov. But more than that, Sarov is Russia's intellectual core of nuclear escalation. Take out one warhead. The enemy rebuilds, but interrupt the brain that designs them? That's a long-term checkmate. Which is why this mission wasn't just an airstrike. It was a message, delivered by the most advanced predator drone ever made. Why the mission was near impossible. Sarov sits within a Zato, a closed administrative territorial formation. Think Area 51 meets a Cold War fortress. The perimeter is sealed by layered S-350 and S-400 missile rings, A-50 radar pickets and electronic warfare fields that can fry most UAV links. Normally, no drone, not even stealthy ones, survive more than three minutes inside this bubble. And with Russia at high alert following NATO's Baltic deployments, the risk of escalation was code red. To make things harder, the strike needed to avoid collateral. No reactor buildings, no urban housing. Only one target building was authorized, a thermal enrichment bay suspected to be housing miniaturized tactical warheads, the strike window. Seconds, in and out. Any delay, and the Reaper would be facing Buk M3 interceptors and Panzer S1 gun missile hybrids. Even more critical, the drone was remotely operated from a NATO forward base in Romania. But final targeting, that was handled by autonomous AI mission logic, because human latency was simply too slow. This wasn't just a drone run, it was a chess move in a battlefield coded in math, radar, and strategic ambiguity. At first glance, the MQ-9B Sky Guardian looks like a regular Reaper, but under the hood, this bird is in a different league. Developed by General Atomics, 
The MQ-9B is the first certified unmanned aircraft to fly in civilian airspace under NATO airworthiness standards. But it's no bureaucratic toy. It's a modular precision weapon system, purpose-built for contested airspace. For this mission, the Sky Guardian was equipped with AAN, APY-8, Lynx Block 30 radar, capable of penetrating foliage, smoke, and even concrete shadows. Next-gen anti-jam GPS with inertial backups. Multi-domain data link for beyond line of sight ops. A new AI-enabled ISR suite that autonomously ranks targets and prioritizes based on threat, tier, and proximity. Its payload? Not a Hellfire, not a JDAM. This drone carried the AGM-179 Jag EMR, a radar-guided missile designed for urban stealth strikes. With a 1-meter CP and programmable detonation fuses, it was ideal for disabling hardened bunkers without triggering a nuclear catastrophe. Cruising at 45,000 feet with a 40-hour loiter time, the drone mapped Sarov's radar blind spots in real time, using signal triangulation and AI-fed electromagnetic heat maps. And when the strike window came, the AI made the decision, faster than any human could blink. At 3.14.06 a.m., the JAG-MR launched. It descended from 42,000 feet in a 19-degree controlled dive. Terminal velocity. Mach 1.3, trajectory correction. Every 0.08 seconds, via internal flight fins and GPS pulse and sync. The target? A reinforced structure beneath a camouflage net with thermal baffles designed to deceive infrared optics. But not this time. The missile's millimeter wave radar locked onto a specific thermal profile, consistent with active plutonium processing. At 127 meters above target, the warhead detonated with a tungsten bore-shaped charge, penetrating reinforced concrete with 10.8 mJ of kinetic energy. The blast did not ripple outward. It tunneled downward into a shaft believed to be the warhead transfer corridor. Shock sensors picked up secondary detonations, non-nuclear, likely high explosives used in warhead casings. By 3.14.11, it was over. A five-second window. No city alerts. No civilian casualties. Just one blackened hole in a place not officially real. And a message burned into Russian high command. Nowhere is untouchable. Satellite imagery. 17 minutes post-strike revealed. Collapse of a 3,200 square foot underground vault. Thermal signature consistent with a 3.6 ton high explosive yield. Disruption in internal power grid. Confirmed by loss of telemetry from three nearby sensors. Activity spike at emergency rail exits indicating evacuation protocols triggered. What was hit? Intelligence suggests a mobile warhead integration site where miniaturized payloads are mounted onto missile chassis. That's not just infrastructure. That's a time advantage neutralized. Because even if you have warheads, delaying deployment by weeks can reset the nuclear chessboard. Especially when the enemy now knows, we know where you build them. This was not an act of war. Not officially. The drone's transponder? Spoofed? The signature? Erased? No flag? No confession? But the strike on Sarov sends a global message. The US can touch the untouchable. Russia's greatest nuclear sanctuary is no longer sacred. The doomsday deterrent now comes with a digital backdoor and a GPS tag. And behind every warhead moved from here on, Russia must now calculate one more thing. Will it survive long enough to matter? In a world of AI-powered surveillance, smart drones, and surgical autonomy, even history's most secret cities are now vulnerable. This war isn't over yet. Would you trust a drone to strike first, before your enemy even moves? Is this the future of peace, or the start of invisible escalation? Comment below. Should AI-controlled drones target nuclear infrastructure? Subscribe now for more real-world defense stories that read like sci-fi, but are already happening because the future fights in silence.